we finally reach the outer edges of the sun, going into what we call the stellar atmosphere. So as a recap and a reminder, the core is deep in the center where all the fusion's happening. Energy's being produced here in the core. The radiative zone, that's the section of the sun that that energy has to bubble up through. Remember, it's photons going through this long, chaotic path out of the core of the sun. And then you'll start to get into the convection zone. The hot air is rising and falling back down. Rising, cools off, falls back down. Now we get into the stellar atmospheres, consisting of the photosphere. This is where we're going to see basically what we call a surface of the sun. We'll see things like granules or the sunspots. Going above the photosphere will be the chromosphere, and this is going to be a large, the red tinge of the sun. And beyond that, we'll have our corona. Corona is this section of the sun that is very difficult to see because of just how bright the sun is. You have to wait for eclipses to happen. But we're going to find a lot of the thermal, how the, the hottest objects are going to be found in the corona. It's the second hottest region of the sun. Pulling up a chart of the stellar atmosphere versus the temperature and altitude, we'll find that as the as we go up into the photosphere, the temperature is decreasing, and eventually we'll reach a transition, uh, a shift. Basically, we're high enough above the surface of the sun that the gases can start to rise again, start raising temperature. Chromosphere is basically this region where the temperature just levels off. And we'll talk about momentarily why, as we how we can keep rising through the sun's atmosphere, but the temperature is relatively stable. But eventually we'll reach this transition region where new properties take over. Basically, the density has gone down enough that we can cut out of what's keeping the chromosphere nice and stable and switch to the corona where the temperature just now just keeps rising with altitude for very similar reasons when we talked about say the atmospheres of planets high up out there the material doesn't really behave like gases anymore they're more like individual free-floating particles that have a lot of kinetic energy to get themselves up that high so breaking down these individual layers start off with the photosphere this is where the light is coming out finally the light that we see from the sun this is the layer that it's radiating from uh, it's around a temperature of about 5780 kelvin not only we'd say that this is roughly the surface of the sun that we see now what the heck do i mean by this limb darkening come look at the edge here right don't look about sunspots. We'll talk about them later. But look at how the sun is darker over here, whereas in the center it's nice and bright. Well, why? There's, there's no reason for the sun to be darker here. If we rotated our perspective, we'd just be staring at the center of the sun again. And so this should be a bright spot. So what is this limb darkening thing? Basically, we are peering at the sun. Imagine you've got laser beams out of your eyes, you're pointing, pointing them directly through the sun. At this point, you're looking into deep into the mass of the sun. Whereas if you go to the edges, your laser beams, they're passing through the edges. You're hitting the atmosphere of the sun. There's not as much material, and so it appears darker. That's the limb darkening. Limb darkening is the apparent darkening of the edges of the sun due to the fact that you're not peering into the sun, you're, peering, you're glancing through its atmosphere. Going one step above the photosphere, we'll reach our chromosphere, which has the very distinctive reddish glow to it. This will be between the 2,000 and 3,000 kilometers above the surface. And the temperature, what's giving it this reddish glow, is specifically an emission due to the excited hydrogen gas there. The hydrogen gas there is producing photons uh, due to their uh, emission spectrum. They're hot, they're excited, they're glowing, they're radiating. And because it's hydrogen, they predominantly produce this reddish 
glow, this reddish tinge of photons. And that's what's keeping the chromosphere at this relatively stable temperature, too. Now you get far enough away, okay, and you'll have the corona of the sun. And this is an image seen during, say, an eclipse. Basically, we need to block out the bulk of the light of the sun, even to visualize the corona. This is, the corona itself is the second hottest region of sun, about a million Kelvin. Remember that the core, the core of the sun, is around 15 million Kelvin. So why is it that the corona gets to be the hottest? It's because these gas, the, these molecules are so excited, they don't really behave like gases anymore. So this material will extend several, several sun radii away. And because of how hot these are, this thing is emitting tons of x-rays. So you're talking about very, very hot, very fast moving particles. Now we look at this. I'm going to help uh, get ourselves this picture here. The sun itself. Here is the nominal direction of the sun. And in order for us to see the corona, we need to start blocking out what we could say is the sun's glare. You block that out, and then you can see the actual parts of the corona itself. So one thing that's worth asking here is the corona. These are very hot, very fast moving particles, and they are far away from the sun. We'll come back, go back a minute. Look at these. These are extending several solar radii away from the sun. If that's one solar, if this is one solar radius. So what's keeping them from flying away? As usual, go ahead and pause, think about it, come right back. It is the sun's magnetic field that's trapping that coronal gas. The sun's magnetic field is this immensely powerful field out there. We're going to see pictures of how it's making these complex pools and swirls. And that field is what's trapping the coronal gas.